Cataclysm, a dark time in Tevat's history. Conria's alchemist gold, corrupted by greed and desire for power, created a horde of dark beasts and monsters, tainted by black blood, to wage war against the lands. Among those who would take up arms in order to avenge the dead and prevent further suffering of the innocents was the one known as the Viridescent Venerer. This is her story. But first, I'm currently striving to reach 100,000 subscribers. If you're a returning viewer, or if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to help the channel reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. Now, on to the video. In the era before the cataclysm that would erupt in Tavat, a nameless orphan was born. Raised in the forests by an unknown master, to be of the same pure heart as the beasts that roamed the woods and plains, she was given the name Viridescent. Taught the way of nature, she wielded a bow of such a green tone that it blended into the forest environment in which she resided. She hunted only for what was needed to live, never were her arrows tainted by hate or desire to kill. When her arrows found their target, she took the time to gently comfort her prey. Calmly, she would stroke their fur as their life force returned to nature, guiding them to the endless plain. This was the natural order, and through it, it was ensured that she too one day would awaken from reality, reunited with the departed in the endless hunting grounds. This belief was passed on to her by her master, and she believed it for her entire life. A gentle soul she was. She had no fear for the beasts of the lands. Her only fear was interacting with her own kind, as it is said that Viridescent had forgotten the language of man, and even after rejoining their world, she never spoke a word to a single person. But this wasn't to say that she wasn't without a desire for companionship, or a curiosity with regard to her own kind. A legend exists of a night where she tracked the scent of other humans to a campsite. From just beyond the brush, she remained silent, hidden from view, watching as they conversed. Using a special container, she captured the sounds of their chatter and laughter. At times where she felt lonely, she would open that container, hearing their laughter once more and silently satisfying her desire to be closer to a world she was never really a part of. With time, Iridescent would become known through local legends, becoming known as the Queen of Hunters to some, and to others, the Viridescent Venerer. Moving silently through the woods, leaving not a trace of her presence, she masked the scent of her human form with a wildflower that once covered much of Tevat. If one desired to meet with Viridescent, one simply needed to close their eyes and follow the scent of the wildflowers. Tales say that whenever Viridescent walked barefoot in the woods, the grass would show her what the birds see, and the lands she walked upon would tell her what the roots could hear. But as the darkness began to enshroud Tevat, suddenly, she could see through the bird's eyes no more, and no longer could she hear through the trees. The cataclysm had arrived, and that darkness was consuming nature. The god of the woods, the former Dendro Archon of this era, had been killed, severing Viridescent's connection to the forest and its creatures, forcing her then to rely on a simple compass to gain her bearings while hunting. She remained unchallenged as the Queen of Hunters, regardless. For some time, Viridescent remained unburdened by the events of the world, until one day, a badly wounded child 
following the scent of wildflowers, found his way to her. He was blind, and succumbing to the grave wounds caused by the dark beasts of the cataclysm, he collapsed under a tree where she often would rest. The iridescent, following the way of nature, comforted the boy as he lay dying in an attempt to guide his innocent life force to the endless plain. Blind though he was, he knew he had found a viridescent, and in his dying breath, he asked that she forego hunting the birds and beasts of the woods, and instead take up her bow to defend humanity, to help quell the tide of darkness enshrouding Tavat. The dying request of the boy shook viridescent to her very core. Thoughts of revenge, a fire's consuming innocence filled her mind. She took to the woods, tracking the tainted blood left behind by the mutated creatures. She found the beasts which brought harm to the boy, and with haste her arrows dispatched her enemy before they could bring harm to anyone ever again. Her master's lessons in this moment served as a reminder that she had strayed from the path of nature. The instant her arrow had pierced the heart of the monster which killed the boy, the endless hunting grounds would be forever out of her reach. She had killed the beast out of desire for revenge. With this realization, Viridescent's mind turned to hypotheticals. What if I hadn't found that boy? What if this cataclysm had never happened? What if I hadn't tracked the tainted blood? Her original purpose was lost, so she buried herself in her new purpose. From that day forward, the queen of hunters who wore not a crown but a pointed hat would bring swift death to the dark beasts, and that hat became among the most terrifying sights to the mutant creatures of the alchemist from Conrea. Remembering a simpler time in her life, when it was easy for her to live off the lands before war distorted her purpose, she thought, at least, do not let this bow be tainted by my mortal vengeance. I cannot reach the other side, whether to meet my master or the parents whom I have never met, but at least let this bow remain pure and let it carry my thoughts and regrets to them. We don't know exactly when it is that Viridescent eventually died, or even if she survived the full duration of the Cataclysm, but the tragic tale of her impulsive justice, causing her to miss out on that which she most desired, I've long felt was one worth telling. In an era of war and death, Viridescent was a gentle soul, but in a moment of impulse, she gave up everything she was raised to believe. It is my hope that we will learn more to the tale of this compelling character, and with time, what became of her will become clear to us. Until then, I will keep searching for hints of Viridescent Venerer, wherever I can. What do you think of Viridescent? I'd love to hear your thoughts on her in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you are notified when my next video goes live. Lastly, join the Tevat Historia Discord server, where you can discuss Genshin Impact's lore, theories, and mechanics with nearly 3,000 other community members. Thanks for watching Tevat Historia. May the seven guide you, travelers.